And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Street Fighter, the miniatures game. It's not really Street Fighter the Miniatures game, it's just Street Fighter the game. I don't know why they call it the Miniatures game. Uh, because you have miniatures fighting each other, but so do many, many, many board games have miniatures in them and they're just called board games, but whatever. Um, I grew up, uh, when I was a teenager, Street Fighter came out the first summer. I think it was Street Fighter 2. And man, that was like a consuming thing. We played it all the time. I was in arcades, people lined up. I was never very good at it, but it definitely was part of my culture and I enjoyed it. I kind of fell away from Street Fighter when I went to college and got introduced to other things and haven't really followed it much since then. Uh, but this definitely brings back nostalgia for me when I know the characters here on the cover, although there's some missing there in the Kickstarter extra stuff. This is a really big giant game. I originally didn't back it. I wasn't really interested and that's because Jasco's written down here. Jasco hasn't made great board games in my opinion and so I didn't really hunt it down and uh, I know Angry Joe, a famous YouTuber, designed it but I don't know. I didn't know if he was a great designer or whatever. So I was intrigued in it, but then I kind of forgot about it. I know the Kickstarter was a long time ago. It took him a long time to deliver, and it's a really big product. Um, I, I saw enough people were talking about it. I said, well, I like Street Fighter. So I went out and hunted down a copy. And I'm going to be talking about just the base game here. I know there's a boss mode box. I have that and a bunch of Kickstarter stuff. But that Kickstarter stuff is just more characters to stick in. So let's take a look at what's in this box and a bit about how the game plays. So here's a setup for one of the modes of the game, the versus mode, 1v1. And in this, you'll put out terrain and stuff according to how it shows you in the back of the book. But I don't see why you, you couldn't just set up anything you want, as long as both players agree that it's fair. You put your characters out. Each character is going to have some stat cards. So here we have Ken versus Sangeef. It shows their move. Ken moves three. Sangeef moves two. Ken has 25 health. Zangief has 27. They also each have an ultra a special ability that they can do. Players will keep track of their life with a KO gauge and then they also have a gauge meter down here which they'll be using to roll extra dice and play their ultra attacks. Each player has their own deck and you can see this deck is Zangief's deck here and it's going to be full of all sorts of cards. You have uh, attack cards which are going to show you how many dice the attack rolls, the range, what kind of attack it is. There's three kinds of attacks, special, strike, and projectile. There's also colors here which will be used to do combo attacks. So this one starts with a red, ends with a red which means I could follow that up with itself or I could follow that one with a spinning pile driver because the one that this starts with has red. The one this ends with was red, so I'll be able to do a follow-up attack on them. Players also have event special cards that they can use to get plus two dice when they defend and other kinds of things. There's all sorts of cards in here. So players are going to have a handful of five cards. And on your turn, the first thing you'll do, except on turn one, is you'll draw two cards. You have a maximum of seven cards in your hand. You then move up to the number of spaces with your move stats. So Ken can move three, so Ken might go one, two, three. You can move diagonally or forward. Then you get two actions. After you, you get a draw action, a move action, and then two more actions, which could be move and draw again if you want to. Or you can play a card. You might have some special effect you can play, but usually the card that you play will be some sort of attack card. Now, when you play an attack card, you play it face down. Normally, you're going to play some sort of card. So, let's say Ken was, or Zangief was here. Zangief might play this card here, which is a range to strike attack, but I'm playing it face down. When you play an attack face down, the defender has to decide how they're going to respond to it. They could simply say, I'm going to block. When you block, you're going to roll two dice, unless you discard special cards from your hand that give you plus two defense, so maybe I would roll four dice. When that happens, the attacker reveals their attack. You both roll dice. The attacker is looking for punch symbols. The defender is looking for shield symbols. You subtract the, sh the shields from the punch, and that's how much damage the defender will take. 
Instead of doing that, there are some special event cards that can be played as a counterattack, um, uh, as a counter. And you can also just decide to do a counterattack. When you do a counterattack, you play a card face down, and you and your opponent both reveal their cards. If they are the same kind of card, so let's say that uh, Zangief is doing a counterattack against Ken, and Ken played the forward step kick. Zangief countered with a long kick. If you counter with the same type, this is discarded, and now I'm hitting you instead. If you don't have the right type, remember there's three types, then this card's discarded, and you just wail on me. So a counterattack can be really cool, but you need to make sure you hit back with the right attack. Once the attack is done, if the attack has done any damage, and there's other things on here, like this has stun one. This also does plus one attack at range one. It's range one or two, but it's four dice at range one and three dice at range two. So there's different special abilities on there. If the attack succeeds and does any damage, then for a free action, you can follow up. So this one needs a four to follow up. So Ken would need uh, a blue to follow up. Ken would need a card with blue to follow up. So he can do a Fierce Hadouken. When he's done with that, there's another blue. So if he's another card that starts with blue, he could play that combo. And you can keep going till you're out of cards or out of cards to play in a combo. That's pretty much it. You're just going to keep going back and forth until you beat each other. Now, a couple things. Many times, you're going to be getting, you're going to be rolling this symbol here, which gives you gauge. When you attack on many attacks, the attacker can spend a gauge to get an extra die, or you can spend a gauge to do different things. Or you can save up eight to do your ultra attack. So Ken can charge three, move it to the enemy three, roll six dice, attack dice, and then mix up two. And the defender takes an additional damage from collisions charged by this charge. There's all kinds of things that you can do with these ultra attacks. There's other rules about hitting obstacles. If you hit like a tree, it's an immobile obstacle, but you take a damage. If you hit a rock, you destroy the rock and you take a damage. And there's like a wall surrounding everything. There's not a whole lot more to the game other than knowing how throws work, what EX attacks work. There's some line of sight rules. And then, of course, there's different modes. There's a power-up mode where you can put out tokens that can do different things. Free-for-all, everyone fights each other. Multiplayer rules. Team mode, two versus two. Uh, tag team mode, classic arcade mode. And that you just play in a straight line rather than going all over the place. So that's it. There are two stages included with the base game. The other stage is an aircraft carrier. So there you go. The miniatures in this game are phenomenal. The Roy compared them to amiibos, and he's right. You know, I have some Disney, uh, not Disney, uh, Nintendo amiibos, and these look like them. They're painted, they're cool, they're huge. I really like them. Now, the character selection here is fine. I, I was actually saddened that my two favorite characters, Dawson and Blanca, don't come in the base set. They come in the extra expansion box, but there's all kinds of characters that you can get if you want to add in that. Uh, from the Kickstarter boxes, you'll have to hunt them down online. So the miniatures are fantastic. I am less impressed with the decks, and one of the reasons for that, I don't mind the this here, you know, the stats. What I do mind, and maybe this doesn't bother most people, but I mind that the artwork seems to shift from card to card. It has like a different style. Like for example, this is a very cartoony style, and this here is more of a realistic style. They have different styles, there's different artists per card, and I don't know, I just found that to be kind of funky for me at least. Um, also, the terrain. So the terrain, I mean look at these, these are really neat. These are missile racks, you use them on the aircraft carrier. They take a long time to assemble. You see these here, are kind of ammunition crates. Why are they not assembled? Because they don't stay together. I have to glue them together. And these trees are so annoying. Why are they annoying? Because first of all, they kind of block your side of the board. They also barely fit in the box. I could not fit the characters in the box. The box comes with this big plastic thing, which if you put the characters in that, you can't put these in a box unless you take them apart every time. And this is one of the first times I wish the game came with just a round counter for terrain on the table. Because while these are cool, the cool thing is the miniatures. And I can't fit more than the six original characters in the box. 
So for the most part, I'm happy with the, the miniatures. I think they're fantastic. The terrain, not so much. The cards, I don't like the artwork, although I do like the shiny backs. And then there's the gauge. This is not a good gauge, really. First of all, if you can spin one, it's, it's too easy to move. But the actual gauge doesn't go to zero. It goes to one, and I thought maybe you start at one, but what if you spend it? There's nowhere for it to go. I went and looked it up online, and they have stickers you can print out to put on these. Uh, thanks, I guess. It seems like for a game this expensive, that's a humongous oversight. So it's kind of a mixed bag. I know anyone who talks about this game is going to go, miniatures! But I love those miniatures. They're amazing. But they're literally the best thing about the game. I'm not as impressed with the rest. Also, not as impressed with the rules. They could have been written better. So I start off in a bit of a deflated mode there, right? The, like, oh, these are cool minis. I don't care if they're cool minis. What about the rest of it? It bothers me that a game that took this long to come to market has packaging problems, missing zeros on the gauge dials, gauges aren't very tight, the terrain isn't that fantastic, and also takes up too much room in the box. Ah, that's kind of a pain. But okay, let's put all that aside. Let's take a look at the game. Fighting game genre which is not something I love in video games, but I do tend to like it in boarding card games. It's been done now for several years, and most of the time when it's been done, it's been done as a card game. It's almost always been done in a straight line. In this game, it's not. Like I said, you can play the classic mode. I think there's even a special board for it that you can go back and forth on that. I don't know that that's the way the game feels no matter what. You can move around, you can push, you can charge, but unless you're playing multiplayer mode, that, that board, you know, the different directions, doesn't seem like it matters as much. You're just moving in and range, out of range, in range, out of range. That's what you're trying to do the whole game. So that was a little odd, but I don't mind that. I like that each character has their own deck, so they feel different. I did find it a little weird at the initial stats. Like you saw, Zangief can only move two, but has two extra hit points. la di da I'd rather have the extra move myself, but that's just minor stuff. I was more intrigued by the cards themselves. So there's a couple neat things that I think the game is good at. I like the game's choice that it has when you're attacked. Do you want to just take the defense? By the way, there's a card in everyone's deck that's called Bait, where you can just, you're just trying to draw a good defensive card out of your opponent's hand. It doesn't do anything really, it just messes with them a little bit. But you also could be really counterattacked by a Bait. Um, uh, and, and, and speaking of the counterattack, when I went over the rules, I said you attack back. I, if I wasn't clear on that, there's little tiny text at the bottom of the card, really tiny text, that tells you how the counterattack works. It's not the same attack here, and you can't follow up on it. It's just a little attack here, which is like, for example, on a strike, put your character in a space adjacent to the attacker, and throw them two spaces, then draw a card. But I like that that choice is there. I like the choice for counterattack. It is a one out of three. Um, or block, or the occasional special card. So I'm a counterattacker. I almost always try it. It fails a lot. And what bugs me about it failing is I'll sit there and go, well, they're three spaces away. So it's either going to be a ranged or a special. Can't be strike. That's usually true, but as I, sh as I showed you the one card, two spaces away was a strike. And in fact, they even mention in the rules, they're like, Zangief has some ranged projectile attacks, even though in the game he doesn't, the video game he doesn't, but they needed to do that for balancing of this. But that is a good thing about this game, that trying to outguess your opponent. Sit there and take it or hit them back, if possible. I don't mind the dice rolling, although the dice rolling is random, for sure. Sometimes you have a devastating attack and you miss, or a great defense, and the attack gets through. There's going to be some randomness added that's not in the video game. That being mixed with the randomness of cards, like, I'm Zangief and I want to punch my opponent, but I can't because I didn't draw any punch cards. Still don't have any punch cards, you know? So you add the randomness of card draw to the randomness of dice. It's a smidge too much randomness, I think. Then we come to the combo system. Well, combos I like. Very few games do this, but I love when games have a card. You play this, you play a combo card, you play another combo card. Yes! Great idea. So uninterestingly developed in this game. I took the decks. I went through almost every deck and looked at the possibilities of combos. You're like, oh, this one can be followed up by a yellow card. I looked through the deck. There's three yellow cards that, that start. 
There's very few combos that have a start and an end. Very few cards that have a start and an end. So most combos are two, maybe three. But you have to have the right cards in your hand. It's not like combos are clever play. You're just like, oh, now I have the chance to play a combo. Combos are also fairly devastating to your opponent. So again, that adds to the luck. This game's too lucky. It really is. I, I, I like the idea of it. I like the fighting and I like the choices. But it's all, between the luck of the dice, the luck of drawing the cards in your hand to get the right combos, I don't feel like there's a lot of strategic choices. I look at my hand and I say, I have a strike. I move two and hit for three. Okay, I guess I'll get close to my opponent and try to play that strike. Maybe if you knew the opponent's deck, you'd have a little bit more idea for counterattacks and things, but that's going to take a while to figure that out. So I know what some of you are saying, maybe when you're watching this, Tom, it's a really light game. Just play it and have fun. I don't disagree on that. It is a really light game. Really light. You run around, hit each other, play cards, throw dice. But this is not a cheap game. I don't often talk about pricing in my games. This is a fairly pricey, expensive game to the point where I don't even know if you can get it on the market at this point in time. Uh, you get It's on a secondhand market, I suppose. But you add that price value into the game, to a simple game, and it's hard to justify. I'm going to buy this for my kids uh, when it costs that much. There's a lot of other simple games that have feature combat between people that are not as expensive. There are card games that offer really good strategic choices, like Battlecon or Yomi. They don't have the Street Fighter characters. But they do a really good job at bringing this combat back and forth into a card game and offer really clever, good choices. This one here is almost banking on the fact that you're going to ignore the light game and just be enamored with these amazing miniatures. Because let's face it, they are amazing. The gameplay itself isn't really bad, although I feel that it's a little too convoluted for how simple the game is, the game just feels a bit unwieldy. And I played it, and I played it multiple times, folks, with multiple characters, because I was like, ooh, I want to play Dawson. I want to try this character out. And each time I left feeling like, nah, that wasn't bad. But that's kind of where I'm at at this point in time. I don't think it's great. I don't think it's awful. It's kind of in the middle there, but I can't recommend it based on how expensive it is for an in the middle thing. Now, if you know someone who's a huge Street Fighter fan, doesn't really care about, you know, deep games, and I don't mean that as a pejorative, it's, that's fine if someone's like that, um, and once that, they, they, they might be a big fan of this and get this for them, sure. But I like Street Fighter a lot. The theme doesn't turn me off. I find it fascinating. You know, we're shouting, you know, all the different catchphrases. I was playing the street, I went and found the Street Fighter music and played it while we were playing the game. But the fights never felt like the Street Fighter. It doesn't bring that video game feeling to life. And you say, but it's a board game. But it, it has to do that. It has to be at least similar to Street Fighter or don't use the name. So, yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag here. I'll put it in the Dice Tower library for sure because some people are going to be attracted by the Street Fighter logo. They're going to want to play it. Uh, I just think you'll have a harder time getting me in one of those games. I'll watch. I'll be amused. I might play it for a bit. But I'm still looking for a great two for two game that, or a, a, you know, a, a one versus one PVP game that, I've, and there's a lot out there with great cards and stuff, but there's very few out there with cool miniatures. I don't think this one has reached that plateau yet. I'm Tom Vassell. This is Street Fighter's Miniatures Game on the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment, man, these are pretty miniatures.